Welcome to the Artistic Finance Podcast, where we break down the wall between art and money. If you're here looking for how to be an artist and financially sustain a career, you're in the right place. Keep listening and join us as we learn about artists and how they make money work for them. Hello, everyone. This is your host, Ethan Steimel, here for episode 52. Thank you for being here, and a special thank you to our patrons. Today, we talk with Miata Adoga, the founder of the financial education company Abundance Bound. We discuss how it helps creatives with a specific step-by-step process to improve their financial situation. Miata served eight years as the financial wellness consultant for the Actors Fund and has led workshops for the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, the Writers Guild of America, the Directors Guild, and the Screen Actors Guild. Before we get to the interview, a reminder that the Artistic Finance 6K, our live episode, will be airing May 5th, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. We will be investing $6,000 of real money. It's only a week away. If you want to participate, become a patron of the show. That will give you access to our poll to decide what investments we will be purchasing. For details on how to listen, visit our website or listen to our episode 49.1, And remember, on May 5th, we are slowing down the podcast to release every other week. If you want me to continue to release weekly interviews, please become a patron. If I can sign up 35 more patrons by May 5th, I will continue releasing weekly episodes. On this week's patron episode, we discuss real estate investing, lead measures versus lag measures, and Miata's love of Monet. If you would be so kind as to become a patron, please do that at patreon.com slash artistic finance. For links to everything we talk about today, visit the show notes or our website, artisticfinance.com. And when you listen to this interview, pay attention to our listener challenge about how you can anonymously be on the podcast. Without further ado, let's get to our interview. Welcome, Miata Adoga, to the podcast. Oh, thank you, Ethan. I'm really glad to be here. The context of today is that we are recording this on April 12th, 2021, amidst the COVID-19 pandemic, a Black Lives Matter slow burn across the world, and a stop Asian hate outcry by the public as a response to an elevated awareness of the violent attacks in the United States against Asian Americans. Yes. Thank you for establishing that sort of context, because I do feel Like, it's just so important that we recognize where we are. Yeah, that everything that we're saying sits in a particular moment in time. We're going to go talk about money and art, which in theory can be a vacuum or can very easily be a vacuum, but it's not. Exactly. For our guests who don't know you, could you tell us just a little bit about yourself and tie into that your relationship with money and or why we're talking today? So I am an actor. Um, I'm also a writer and a wife and a mom of two children, but I am also the president and founder of a company called Abundance Bound. And we are a financial education company specifically for actors, artists, and creative professionals from really all walks of life. As an artist myself, I was blessed to be incredibly well-trained and to have wonderful experiences in terms of being an actor, but I was not given any of that training or wonderful experiences when it came to understanding money. And as a result, that led to what I would call an extremely painful beginning to my professional life as an artist, as an actor, and just a lot of mistakes. I mean, we're all going to make mistakes, but I feel like a lot of mistakes that came from just a lack of understanding as to how to cultivate a healthy, thriving relationship with money as an artist. Um, And and that very, very painful time in my life led me to just sort of start asking the questions, how do we change this? 
um, for artists because I just couldn't believe that it had to be that way. And I now very much don't believe that it had to be that way, has to be that way. Um, and that was what led me to start Abundance Bound now 16 years ago. Part of the reason, no, the reason why I'm so happy that you're talking with me today is because I started this podcast. It's This episode is a week before our year anniversary. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. But I started it to generate conversations because in my brain, it's like money is not complicated, but artists don't always necessarily understand it, get training with it, or have a lot of it. And so we sort of ignore it and overly complicate things. So I thought, okay, this is easy. I'll do this podcast and I'll start generating these conversations and letting people know, hey, it's okay to talk about all this. Going back to me not thinking it's complicated, if I want to know something, I just go online and I look it up and I say, oh, okay, this is how a mortgage works. I, we just talk about money here. I don't actually give any advice or help. I mean, I mean, we do right. accidentally. <laughs> <laughs> but what, what I love about your program, and this is a program I've been aware of, and I have never taken the plunge. I, I know I should be out of it. But you are actually helping people. You're, you're giving them a roadmap. You're giving them a way of thinking. Um, and that's why I'm so happy to talk to you, because now I can say to people, Okay, talk about it, yes. But also, if you want action steps, go see Miata because she really will get you on the right track. Like if you're feeling shame about it, if you're feeling it's not right, et cetera, here is Miata and her, her company and she is for you. So that's why I'm thrilled to have you on. And, well, thank you. And I, I feel like you lay out something that's really important because first of all, even talking about money that is a critical first step. It is so important. And it's an area that we don't talk. We generally don't talk with our parents, right? Except for maybe warnings about what we shouldn't do, right? But that doesn't really come with any clarity around what we should do. We also, and this to me is really damaging, we don't talk with our friends right? We're all hiding. We're all sort of pretending that, oh, I got this. We're just fine, right? How can we grow in areas that we're not willing to have open and honest conversations where we're not willing to say, I'm struggling with this, or I'm afraid of this, or I don't even begin to understand this. That is why I love podcasts like yours, really saying, okay, let's at least bring this out of the shadows, right? On the other side, we have this idea that I just need to find the, the right advisor. I, I need to find the right expert, the right professional, and then I'll kind of hand things over to them and let them do it, let, let them manage it, right? And that is also incredibly damaging, dangerous, right? As, as damaging and dangerous as not talking about it, because then what we're doing is kind of the covering our eyes, closing our ears, and hoping someone else is going to take care of our money for us, right? We are here to really bridge those two sides, to have the open and honest conversations about money. We're also here to provide the education and the step-by-step -step processes, the kind of day daily and weekly and monthly and quarterly, annual, actual behaviors that we want to be engaging in around money. So that if we seek advisors and partners in different areas of our financial lives, we're doing that as leaders of the team, not just like abdicating all responsibility to some quote unquote expert. Yes. If you take the time to look into your own finances, you realize that you have to take ownership of it all. In my opinion, it, you, everyone thinks, yeah, I need a financial advisor and they will give me the answers. But of course, I need money to go to a financial advisor. It's blah, blah, blah. 
But the reality is you go to a financial advisor and they just tell you what you already know. And then you have to decide. We all think we need a financial advisor, but my opinion, no, 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 we do not. <laughs> Absolutely. So I, I agree with you. I have a bias for the most part. I feel there is a place where a financial advisor can become important, where a CFP, a certified financial professional might be important. I definitely feel one of our very first financial partners is going to be a tax professional, a CPA. That's a partner that I think is important. There may be times when a business manager maybe becomes a member of your team. But man, do I feel like there are only very specific instances where that would be someone you would bring onto your team. And then with lots of caution, caution, you know, wrapped around that. At the core, when we go looking for these advisors, we are seeking to abdicate responsibility in the relationship. And that's really where we're coming from. First and foremost, we all have to develop and strengthen our relationship with money. We have to recognize that that is a relationship we all have. It is a relationship we will always have. And it's a relationship that like any other relationship, we must play a constant and active role in keeping it healthy and abundant and happy and thriving. Could you describe for us your demographics? So I am, I've just turned 49. So it is my last year in my 40s. I am a Black woman. I have a husband. My husband's name is Adam. And I have two children. I am a college graduate. I graduated from Williams College in Williamstown, Massachusetts. And I trained at a conservatory in London. So from college on, I would say, had a pretty clear focus on acting. I was born in New York City, raised in New Jersey, college and training in Massachusetts and then England. I then went on to live in Los Angeles for the vast majority of my sort of post training life. Um, and I now live in Boquete, Panama. So that was a, a big move that we made really as a result of, of the coronavirus, the pandemic, um, and a need to shake things up a bit. Your creative personality, what is a live event that you like to experience as an audience member? Theater. I love the theater. I just so much. I think in my early years, not early, I mean, I think I, I, I wasn't sort of, I didn't come out of the womb thinking I was going to be an actor at all. I really started as a singer. Probably in my late teens, I really believed it was going to be Broadway for me, singing, dancing, musicals. But in college, I fell in love with classical theater. So Shakespeare, um, that of course was a big part of what took me to London. If I could make a living doing wonderful plays and playing those characters, I, I think that is where my heart lies. So I, I love being in the audience of a play. As that curtain comes up, there's an excitement for me still in my stomach about what are those actors about to create that is above everything else for me. On to your financial personality. Are you bad or good with money? So it's such a funny question, right? Because I guess, Ethan, what I would say is that I no longer approach it that way. I no longer approach it from that perspective. What I believe, we have a relationship with money. 
it's one of the few relationships we don't have a choice. I don't get to say, oh, I don't, I'm not interested in having that relationship, right? We all have it. We've had it from the day we were born and we'll have it until the day we leave this earth. Like any relationship, it's going to be somewhere on the spectrum, right? From healthy and thriving to like horrible and toxic and fearful and painful. And I think like any relationship, it's about how I show up to the relationship. None of us are perfect. Name any relationship in your life that matters. There are times when I don't show up in a strong and positive way for that relationship. There are times when I'm not playing my role in keeping that relationship healthy. And then there are times when I'm really showing up. I'm a good deal clearer now about what it takes to show up to the relationship and to have it be healthy and thriving. I don't think I take it for granted. I'm much more honest with myself when I am being neglectful and I'm being dishonest and I'm, you know, being demanding and like all of those things, like with any relationship, I am extremely committed to having a healthy relationship with money. Sometimes I do better at that than, than other times. Backtracking abundance bound is 16 years old. So that means you started it when you were 33 ish. Yeah. Did you start it to help yourself get better or was this already five years into your commitment to your financial health that you thought, you know, I, I need to help other people do what I did. Yeah. So it probably was about five years into my journey. I think you probably have that just about right. I mean, look, the journey was much longer, but I think it was probably about five years into my like, oh my God, <laughs> I, I got to change this. At my sort of bottom, I was over $80,000 in credit card debt, right? I started Abundance Bound certainly with a good amount of debt left, but the debt was headed in the right direction. I don't ever teach from the place of, oh, look at me, I'm done. And now I can show you, like, to me, that's absolute hogwash. The minute you believe you're done is the minute your financial relationship is screwed. Like, <laughs> sorry, right? Because it's the same as sort of my marriage. I mean, I'm married 24 years. Do I ever get to say, yep, that relationship's in the bag. I don't need to think about that anymore. Like we would all not be even a tiny bit surprised when that marriage ended, right? I am just really committed to sharing what certainly what I've learned. I hope that I can shorten some people's path. I hope that I can help you avoid some of the significant pain that I went through. Um, but it's more about saying, we believe that everybody wants to have a thriving relationship with money. What's an environment that supports you in, in doing that, helps you along the way and answers the questions and increases your education and your comfort level and provides accountability. That's really what we're about more than like, if you do this, this, and this, then you're good forever because that doesn't exist. What I'm taking away from your description is that it's a financial educational resource and community. It seems like there's the teaching element and then equally important is the community part. What is Abundance Bound? Like if I go to the website and I become a member, like what what is that? Is the focus on budgeting? Is it on earning more? Is it on making an artistic life that's financially sustainable? So anyway, what is Abundance Bound and, and what does it teach? Because we have to have, right, a, a label for what we are. I absolutely would say that Abundance Bound is a financial education company, right? That would be sort of the, the nutshell of how I would describe it. Now, then within that, it is how do we do what we do? 
right? And so financial education, I think that there's an instant for many of us, all right, we think school and we think courses and we think teachers at the front of the room. And then we think uh, coursework and homework and grades, mm-hmm. right? Yep. So we definitely, we definitely don't have grades. <laughs> um, we are extremely focused on what it takes to have a healthy financial relationship. Okay. And I believe that that has multiple facets to it. So our core program is our financial empowerment program. Okay. That's the core program. It's where I think we are doing our best and most important and valuable work. So within the financial empowerment program, we are focused on three areas, okay? We're focused on your money mindset, okay? Because, oh my gosh, I used to believe that that was all the kind of frou-frou stuff. That was all the, oh, come on, all right, think positive, whatever, right? And my goodness, have I changed my perspective there so that our mindset and how we are thinking about ourselves and our relationship with money is huge in terms of everything else. That's the foundation. So money mindset, we focus on money management. Okay. Now money management is really, Ethan, that's where it's like, these are the actions. These are the things that I want you to do. This is the knowledge I want you to have and the steps I want you taking again on a daily and weekly and monthly basis. And it's really understanding how do we know our numbers and what does it mean to know our numbers? And then how do we track what's happening with our finances? How do we revenue model? So start to take more control over understanding how money comes into our lives. How do we put a debt plan in place? What does it mean to build wealth and to get your money working for you and having a basic understanding of investing and all of those kinds of just practical steps. So we refer to that as money management, right? And there are courses in the program and you can do the courses and do the steps and do the homework, right? And then we focus on making more, right? Because for many of us, I think, frankly, everybody, right? At the end of the day, financially powerful people have multiple streams of income, right? And particularly as creatives, as artists, we have to become as powerful earners as we possibly can, right? So that's another whole area of our program for people who are looking to create additional streams of income or who already have them but need to strengthen them. And so that's that's it in a nutshell. It's mindset, it's management, and it's making more. And we do all of that within a structure of coursework, of um, reading, we read books and discuss books together, of regular Q and A's throughout the month so that we can have these conversations and people can come get mini coaching on like, I'm stuck with this or how do I take the next step on that? We have um, accountability structures. So we offer what we call power hours, which is just, you know, sometimes even I just got to sit down with my whatever, my debt plan, or there's a book I'm trying to read, or there's coursework I need to complete or financial calls I need to make. And I don't want to do them, right? So let me come into a sort of study hall with other people who are here declaring that in this hour or two, this is the work we're going to do together, 
right? And then everybody has that sort of accountability and support. And yes, community is a really big part of it. So we have a private community where people can ask questions and network with each other and form smaller mastermind groups and offer um, resources and all of those things that I think are super powerful about being an artist who is surrounded by other artists and creatives who are committed to having a healthy financial relationship and who are willing to share openly and honestly both our wins and also our struggles and our challenges, right? So does that answer your question? <laughs> it's, that, that it's a lot. That is a wonderful answer. There was a TED Talk about what it takes to be a leader. And one of the key elements, I will try to find the video and, and post it in the show notes. One of the key elements about there being a leader was there needed to be somebody to second that person. People can be leaders. They need somebody to second them. That one person to follow them that gives them the confidence and then gives other people reason to follow this person. There are people with their financial lives and maybe they want to become real estate investors or maybe they they want to work on a, another income stream. They need to jump that hurdle. If you can just go in and give the mindset second opinion and, and say, I agree with you, I support you, I will do what I can to help, you're probably not going to really have to do anything to help. Obviously, anything you can do to help, sure, but the giving them the support is going to help them on their journey. So if you have opportunities in your life to see other people where it's like they just need that push, like you can't do it for them, but you can say, I support you and I'm going to help you or try to connect you because I want you to succeed. Because I think that can help people sometimes. Absolutely. I always say, I'm sure someone said this, and so please don't think this is a Miata quote. What would be possible if the people around you refused to let you fail? And let's like really think about that. Like not as just some woo woo statement, but like what would be possible if the people around you refuse to let you fail? And I believe that what that requires of us is an active commitment to both being people in the pe other people's lives where we simply, no, we won't let you fail, right? And who is that one person in your life or those two or three people in your life, right? And it is also actively making sure that you're surrounding yourself with those people. One of the things that is very special and that I'm excited about seeing become even more powerful is the community aspect, you have a space to find people who can be that second for you. We recently had a mastery conversation, one of my favorites, that was an actor and she invests in real estate. Part of why I feel like it was so brilliant, she shared step by step what she did. And she is a member of the community. She's a member of the community. And this happens to be the area where she's really soaring and so wants to show other people how to create this change in their lives, right? We have other members. We have a member who has worked for years. She's also an actor, a successful actor. She's worked for years to be certified as a tax preparer. And she now has created this whole program that she calls drama-free taxes, right? Because, because she knows the drama that so many of us pack around our taxes. So now within the community, do you see how there becomes this sort of cyclical support system because both she is supporting people in a really important way, but they are also being that second of saying, yes, I want what you know. And that's just really exciting. Yeah. Well, I, I would say the two most important things about Abundance Bound are that private community, that people that are all on the same page and saying, we're here for each other. We're here to support you if you need it. And we're here to just be real, like that we, we care about our finances. 
And then the other thing you, you said, which I, f I think this would be really important in my life, is the power hour. Oh, I've talked about this on the podcast where I know I need to call the cable company yes. and get that bill dropped $20. I know that. And I talked about that in January. And here it is in <laughs> April. So that's $20, $40, $60, $80 that had I called in January if I had taken the power hour. So that power hour, yes, you could do it through your group, but you could do that for yourself is set one hour aside a month. Like that's 12 hours a year. That's like nothing. Set that one hour and say, I don't necessarily know what I'm going to do, but I know it has to do with my finances and, and something like that. I think that power hour is brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, and it's so funny because I do not take credit for the power hours at all. What happened was that we have our abundance bound course facilitators and they came to me and said, we believe that this is something that the community really wants. And so they started leading these power hours. And I believe it's in a fascinating way. It is, has become one of the most valuable parts. I'm going to push back just a tiny bit. You know, you said like an hour a month. I am looking for two hours a week, right? I'm looking for two hours a week. And this is why, or this is sort of the foundation of it. There is a book um, and it's called The Millionaire Next Door. Okay. And forgive me, it is actually quite a boring book. So I'm not like, I, I'm not, you know, saying everybody run out and read this book. But what was super interesting about The Millionaire Next Door is that they really researched what they call prodigious accumulators of wealth. OK, so people who are actively building wealth as opposed to under accumulators of wealth and an under accumulator of wealth. These are really we're, we're basically living hand to mouth. We're barely getting by. We hope we have enough to cover the bills. And they pulled different things about them to try to paint a picture of what prodigious accumulators of wealth look like. And so there were lots of areas that they dove into, but the one that stuck with me the most was what amount of time they were spending working on their money, not working for money, right? Because a lot of us spend lots of time working for money. A lot of us spend a lot of time worrying about money, right? But actually working on their money. Now, in abundance bound language, we would say how much time you are giving to your financial relationship, right? Any relationship you care about, you got to show up. And the average number of hours that prodigious accumulators of wealth were spending working on their money was 8.4 hours a month. Okay, 8.4 hours a month. The under accumulators of wealth was about half that. It was a little bit more than four hours a month. So I genuinely believe that that is what we're looking for. We're looking for an average of two hours a week. Now, there are a lot of things that are working on your money when you are reading, when you're learning, when you're making those phone calls, right? When you're listening to the Artistic Finance Podcast. Exactly. When you're <laughs> listening to the Artistic Finance Podcast, when you are revenue modeling your business or exploring different ways that your business might earn more, when you're looking at how are you going to start that step of investing your money, right? When you're meeting with your financial team, your tax preparer, all of these things is working on your financial relationship. And so our power hours we have a minimum of one two hour power hour session every week, allowing usually we have two, but allowing everybody the opportunity to block out those two hours a week to work on their financial relationship. All right, Miata, this is a crazy conversation in a wonderful way. And this is the reason why I have not joined Abundance Bound. To be perfectly honest here, I have not joined because I do not want to accept responsibility. I do not want to show up 
and people say, oh, you did your two hours this week. And then I have to say, oh, and, and then I, and then I'm just going to log out end my subscription and run away because, because so that, that, that is a real honest thing for me is like, I see the value in it. I really do. And I really want it in my life, but I'm too, I'm not, I'm not taking ownership. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and I love, I love that. Right. I genuinely, and I mean this, I love that because Ethan, why is it, we all do this, but why is it we either feel like I have to be perfect at something or I'm not going to do it. Right. If I said I have to be perfect at my marriage or I'm not going to do it. Here's another one. I have to be perfect as a parent or I'm not going to do it. Well, let me tell you, my children would be being raised by wolves right now, right? Because like, <laughs> boy, am I not perfect, right? But, but even the smaller things, how do you show up to your creative career? Have I decided I have to be perfect as an actor or I'm not going to do it, right? Do I... And some of us do this, right? Do I not show up to acting class if I don't feel like my scene is perfect, right? Um, and that is also why Abundance Bound exists. And it's why the Financial Empowerment Program exists. So one of the things I just want to say, because I think it's important for people to know this, the Financial Empowerment Program, the cost for that is $25 a month. Okay, so so first, let's just really establish what we're talking about in terms of the investment. Now, we didn't make it $25 a month to minimize it, right? Because I believe, and I don't say this to like pat myself on the back, I believe it is worth, it is priceless what we're offering. Um, we made it $25 a month to remove that from the conversation to remove, I can't make this investment and therefore I can't get the help in my financial relationship. So then, right, we have to have the conversation on the level that you're having it, which is the honest reason, which is I don't want to do it. And I don't want to be held accountable to it, right? So that I love, right? Because if, if we get to hide in the, I really can't manage this financially right now, and as soon as I can manage it, then I'll do it, that keeps us from having the honest conversation. So that then allows me to say, okay, so Ethan, you, if I asked you, what kind of relationship you want to have with money, right? What are some of the descriptive words that you might throw out for the kind of relationship? And if you're stuck, think about any relationship that matters to you. What are some of the words you would use to describe the kind of relationship you'd like to have? Effortless, easy, uh, powerful, maybe not so, but like good. Like uh, <laughs> I just want to feel good about it. Like I want yeah. oh, control, control. Okay. So I would, one of the things that I would dive deeper with anyone on, I think we do best in looking at our relationship with money. If we truly put in the name of someone who we care about, right? And I would suspect that if there is a close relationship in your life, that you would not say, I seek control in that relationship, right? I Maybe that you want it to be easy, but I don't think what you mean there is you don't want to have to do any work. You want them to do everything and it to just go well, right? And so that's one of the first kind of mindset pieces that I think is really important for us all to look at. Because when I say we have a relationship with money, 
I actually mean that the same way I mean any other relationship. And I don't think I seek to control my children. I seek to control my husband, right? They, they may disagree, but you know what I mean? In other words, that doesn't, that's certainly not uh, what we would describe as a healthy relationship. I would say I want it to be peaceful, right? I would say I want there to be trust and understanding, right? I would definitely say I do need for there to be boundaries, right? My boundaries don't have to be the same as yours, or right? But like we have to define what they are, right? I want it to be an honest relationship, right? I certainly want there to be some fun in it, right? Like I want it to, um, I want there to be a sense of humor and comfort with the relationship, right? So, so that's sort of the first place that I feel like we all need to dive into, okay, what do we really want if we shift our mindset to this is a relationship? So then I would ask you, um, what is that going to require of you? right? What's that going to require of you? And what I would then ask you is, what support do you need to show up better? Not to show up perfect, but to show up better, right? And can an environment like the financial empowerment program, it doesn't have to be that, right? Everybody, I want everyone to understand that it doesn't have to be that, but it has to be something that helps you to show up better day in and day out, helps you to have a place where when you've fallen off the wagon, you can come back and without any judgment, just get what you need to take those next steps. Because running from it and saying, I'm not being good, therefore I won't do anything, is probably not getting you the relationship you want, right? And so that's where I just sort of feel like, so the question is always what serves us. That's always the question, yeah. right? All right, Miata. I so loved that discussion. And I just want to say out loud that that was uncomfortable for me, you know, because I had to answer a real question. And thankfully, you didn't make me answer the other ones here. <laughs> but then you gave me an amazing answer. You helped shift my mind here a little bit. I'm still not committing that I'm going to become a member of Abundance Bound because <laughs> I'm, it still made me uncomfortable. But it, but it was over. Like that was like ripping off a Band-Aid. Thank you. I'm, I'm really glad we just sort of did that because that was uncomfortable for me, but it didn't need to be like there's no need to be. And you have to face the music if, if you want to get anywhere. If you want to get anywhere. You know, one of my favorite things, and I literally love this. And, and in our Q&A's, people see me get all excited. Right. Is when people have debt. Right. Because, man, do I have a lot of experience with debt. Right. And what everybody knows as a member of our community is our Q&As are an opportunity where I can help you set up a debt plan, right? And there are two ways you can do this and people choose differently. Some people will simply say, I raise my hand, here are my numbers and we tell people you know, what information we need you to come with. And yep, it's me, let's talk through my numbers, right? Other people will just send me the numbers and I will do it in class as a simply an anonymous uh, provider of, you know, someone has given us these numbers so we can all learn and work from them. And it works either way, right? The only benefit when people are, are okay with this is me, right? is that they can ask clarifying questions as I go, right? Um, but there's also a way to ask clarifying questions, even if it's not, if you don't want to admit sort of that it's you. But no matter what, I want us getting real, right? 
like what good does it really do to have like a theoretical conversation about debt? Let's like hardcore look at, these are my five credit cards, these are my balances, these are my interest rates, and let's talk real. And if we do that for, for five people, whether it's your numbers or not, you will see a process in action, right? First of all, yes, I'm very much of get your skin in the game. Like you, you need to have something invested. There's no point in day trading with paper money, you know, put in $10. I want, I want to give a challenge to our listeners. If you would, if you would agree to this and you can say no later, but <laughs> if, if there's anybody listening and they're in a money situation where it's like, I have too much debt, I, I don't, I just don't know what to do. Analysis paralysis, email us artistic finance podcast at gmail.com email us what this problem is like what it is you don't it's gonna be anonymous you don't have to reveal yourself and then miata if you would mind if somebody actually does send me something and say hey look i'm in this predicament this financial predicament you know i just i just need a little guidance would you mind coming back on for five minutes in the future and we can talk about it like as an anonymous thing and sort of just put it out there so that way they can get the help it can be anonymous and it can help other people because i really love that sort of an anonymous you know, option. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. I think it is really valuable to look at real life situations, right? And to also understand, you guys, I'm not magic, right? Abundance Bound isn't magic. Like at the end of the day, there are some core things that I'm going to be very honest about in every situation that is going to need to happen to move you forward, right? Um, but it is about recognizing that when we bring minds together, more than just us, we can circle, circle, circle around a problem in our own heads forever. When we bring outside perspective in, it's like, great, here are options right? And now again, how do you believe that you can be who you need to be to create the changes that you, that you want? I, I, I talk about this a lot and I'll, I'll just say it here. I, when I named my company 16 years ago, I, I don't believe that I had the level of clarity I have now about why I think our name is so important. The reason why um, Abundance Bound, that name matters, is because I believe, right, that our goal as human beings is to be both bound to and I mean, literally tied to abundance, meaning, right, that I am always, that is what I am rooted towards. It doesn't mean that I'm perfect, right? But it means that that's my commitment. Uh, think of it like a vow, right? And also that I am headed towards it. So both bound to and bound towards abundance. And I think that that is a lifelong journey. We don't one day say, look at me, I am now abundant. I have arrived, right? No, it's about, again, what is your constant rooting, okay? And so even why I believe, right, that the financial empowerment program would be valuable for you is because it helps keep you reminded, even if it's just that $25 charge next month. Okay, 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 what am I gonna do this month? One thing, one thing, right? Okay, next month, two things. Like it reminds you, you have this relationship and how are you going to stay bound to that abundance. All right. The relationship thing is important too, because a lot of people answer that question, are you good or bad with money? And they'll, a lot of people say, well, I was bad and then I got good. And my follow-up question is always, when did you get good? 
And nobody has ever said, oh, it was when I was 32. Or, oh, it was, it was this one day I remember, and then I was good with money. No, 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 no. It's always, well, I learned this, I learned this, I learned this, and now look here, I feel like I, I you know, I know how to deal with yeah. things. Yes, absolutely, right? And and trust me, you can be good, and then you can be bad, <laughs> right? And so, like, that's just true of life, right? Okay, so we're running out of time. There's all these questions that I didn't even ask. So I'm just going to pick a few here to sort of wrap up. One of those is going back to, well, I just want to make this comment that you said revenue modeling. And I know for me, I understand the word revenue. I understand modeling. You say that, and it just gives me like a panic attack of like, this is a word, but it's clearly a very familiar term to you. And clearly anybody in Abundance Bound is totally on top of whatever that term is. So that's just an example of it's this mysterious word phrase that you're saying that it's not complicated if we were to get into it. We're not going to go get into it right now. Terms like that need to sort of just get into our vocabulary. Yes. And I'll just say very, very quickly, you know, we use particular terms in Abundance Bound that we think are important and we explain why we think they're important. And there are also words we really don't use. So for instance, we really don't uh, use the word budgeting, right? And But there's a very specific reason why we don't, and we give you an alternative. So it's not just about fancy, fancy language. It's about why and how this might resonate for you in a way that you just hadn't thought of before. If somebody wants one-on-one -on -one coaching, is that like a set rate, like $50 an hour or something like that? One-on-one -on -one sessions they're sold in packages. So as an as a member of the financial empowerment program, you can buy a single session for $250. And but then we have people who, for instance, want six sessions or they want 12 sessions. And then people can find on the website prices go down if you want that kind of commitment. Okay. And the last last number question, which is that that cash flow team or group. How much is that like another monthly subscription or is it per group? You cannot be in the cash flow program without being in the financial empowerment program. Like it's just a foundational part of how we work, which is that you've got to be doing this work on the outside. So the creating cash flow program has what we call a commitment fee of $100. And then it is an additional $50 a month. So for our people who are in both programs, they are paying $75 a month. Um, again, I really encourage people to go uh, read about the Creating Cash Flow program, because in my opinion, as someone who has built her own business and who for many years spent a ridiculous ridiculous amount of money on all the stuff out there about how to build a business. I say with all confidence, it is unparalleled the support that you get for $50 a month. So Ethan, I just want to throw out that because of the thousands of dollars that I spent learning how to have a healthy financial relationship, my commitment has always been the abundance bound programs are priced unbelievably fairly. And that is a part of our mission, right? It's a part of why we're here. And, and I ask the numbers because I want to know. And it's not to push, put anyone off and say, oh, well, it's going to be $75 a month or it's going to be $250 for a one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, we offered right here that you can email us, pose a problem to us, and we will have Miata respond to you and figure it out. So there's free for you. I think our listeners understand the value. I just wanted to know so that people know, you know, okay, what do I get for that? What do I get? That's why I wanted to know numbers, just because I like to be upfront and honest with everyone. Your stuff is very reasonably priced. Anybody could go online and find a $30,000 package that's going to solve their problems. And I bet it would do them a lot of good to purchase it. But you, of course, would have to have the $30,000. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I always joke about how, you know, I was $80,000 in debt and I put a, a eight month uh, coaching program on my maxed out credit cards. And that coaching program cost me thousands of dollars. Now I'm not 
I don't regret it. It changed my life, right? But I do also believe that um, that's one of the challenges and it's one of the reasons why we avoid having this conversation and that's the part of the equation that we wanna take off the table. And I wanna say Ethan Steimel does not pay for education ever. And this is something that I'm beginning to change in my life because I realized the beauty about the world today is you can find that really niche specific thing you want to know and there's a course for it or there's a way to learn about it um, rather than what I do, which is go through YouTube, finding videos. And the answers are all out there. They totally are all out there, but it's like a specific news source. It's like you have your specific news source because you want them to give you a perspective or give you a view, put you on the right track. This is what is important to us today. So I'm now realizing that I need abundance found in my life. <laughs> and really, I just had you on to, to motivate me. That has nothing to do with the listeners. <laughs> right? Because I think you're absolutely right. All the information is out there, right? And I think part of what we're really clear about is that um, the world, but also specifically as artists and creatives, we are up to a lot and we are extremely busy, right? And so to me, it is also, all right, if I buy into the fact that this is a relationship I have to have, and I buy into the fact that I want it to be healthy and thriving, and I buy into, uh, all right, it's probably gonna take me about eight hours a month, I wanna know what I need to be doing with those eight hours, right? Because I don't have time to be running all over the place trying to gather those eight hours and kind of spinning my wheels. So I think that's, an important part of the role we fill. All right, we're out of time. So just two more questions to wrap this up. What financial advice would you give yourself back when you started your career? Or would you give to somebody else that's starting right now? I think um, everything that we've been talking about, I would say, recognize that this is a part of being a powerful creative. We don't get to put it on the side. So how do I include incorporate my relationship with my finances with my relationship with my art and make those work together symbiotically as opposed to viewing them as enemies. Final question, where can people find out more about you? Abundancebound.com. I am very much focused on delivering within our community. So you can certainly find us on Instagram and Facebook and all that stuff. But um, abundancebound.com is where you'll really find me. Fantastic. All right, Miata, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing all of this knowledge and information. Ethan, thank you for having me. I really, I think it's so exciting what you're doing. And I've loved, I've loved having this conversation. That was our interview with Miata Adoga. My takeaways were mindset, money management, and making more. Those three things combined are what we need. 8.4 hours a month to focus on your relationship with money. That's only two hours a week, that's only 15 minutes a day, and it will improve your situation. And finally, send us your financial problem. Email artisticfinancepodcast at gmail.com and Miata will anonymously give you an answer on the show. Find the additional content for this episode over at Patreon. We discuss real estate investing, lead measures and lag measures, and Miata's love of the painter Monet. Up until May 5th, you can help produce this show for as little as $3 a month. Do that at patreon.com slash artistic finance and do it by May 5th to help us keep weekly episodes coming. Remember to tune in live on May 5th at 8 p.m. Eastern time for the Artistic Finance 6K to find out what $6,000 of investments we make. This is real money, I'm putting skin in the game so that we have something at stake while we learn how to track investments. Become a patron to access the poll or give us investment suggestions. You have one more week to do so. Join at patreon.com slash artistic finance. For details on listening live or calling in on May 5th, 8 p.m. Eastern time, listen to our 6K bonus episode or visit our website. That's it for today. Until next time, break a leg. Thank you for listening to Artistic Finance. Find more information on our website, artisticfinance.com. Please subscribe to our podcast and please leave a rating and review. 
Artistic Finance is produced in New York City by Nicole and Ethan Steinle. Producing consultant Anne Nygren-Doherty. Graphics and website by Josh Cutler. Music by Chong Liu.